In today's video, I'm gonna teach you about a new speed painting system with a ridiculous name. And trust me, it's a much better speed painting system than that other speed painting system with an equally ridiculous name. And this speed painting system is so much better than any other speed painting system that I'm sure nobody on the internet will have anything negative to say about it. The speed painting system known as Slap Chop has taken the miniature world by storm over the last year or so, and with it has come not only a healthy dose of internet drama, but also a slew of content creators trying their hand at the new painting system, and some even trying to improve on it, myself included. But in my experiments with Slap Chop, something just uh, didn't sit right with me. Now I get it, it's a system designed to just get your models painted quickly and on the gaming table. And while that's efficient, it approaches painting like it's a painful chore, something to rush through, bereft of all joy. So to me, the next logical question is, how do we take these efficiencies from tried and true speed painting methods like Slap Chop and also instill all the fun and relaxation that we can get while at our painting desk? And that's exactly what we're gonna attempt to do today in this totally new, yet probably not new at all, system of speed painting we call the suck cut. Exactly how does the suck cut work? Well, as you can see, it sucks as it cuts. <laughs> Before we get to the painting, I wanna take a second to talk about what I'm painting. It's a 3D printed model, this cool lady with a big giant sight. And the quality of these prints these days are bananas. With these 8K printers, it feels like it's something I should be spending way more for than like 30 cents in resin. Now I'm not gonna spend a ton of time digging into all the intricacies and what I love and don't love about 3D printing. One thing that I really find valuable is how easy it is to just resize the model however you like. So I printed off two different sizes of this model so I could decide which one I liked and which one showcased the details of the model better. Sometimes the models that you print out are just a little bit too small in comparison to the other game size minis that I'm playing with. So I can just up it five or 10% or make it five or 10% smaller to fit right in with the rest of my units or army. And just like any cast resin, plastic, or metal model, there is some cleanup that needs to be done in 3D printed models. The awesome thing is these things have literal no mold lines because they've never been in a mold. The downside is you have these little divots that sometimes show up from where the model was attached to the support. So don't neglect these because oftentimes you'll find that you missed some while you're painting and you'd hate to have to come back through and clean it up again after you've primed it and notice the parts that you missed. One of the main aspects of Slap Chop that the suck cut method is going to steal is the power that we get from a really potent zenithal prime. But not just a black, gray, and white zenithal, we're actually gonna come in with powerful saturated colors for our initial prime and zenithal from above. I'm gonna try out these new AK Interactive Dual XO paints. Now these things are really cool because they're actually a polymer that doesn't require any priming underneath. So basically you get to use them just like primer and they come in a ton of different colors. So you can just set up the A and the B that you want to get the regular undertone and the highlight from above. And I did make a pretty noticeable goof up in this step. I actually didn't thin this dual XO enough and it gave me a little bit of a texture and spitting coming out of my airbrush, not the end of the world. I would have just thinned it a little bit more, maybe more like a 50-50 thinner to paint and this wouldn't happen at all. Honestly, this little bit of texture that's left behind for my goof up is really not the end of the world. I often find that when we get so hyper-focused on a mistake we made, it kind of just ruins the mojo of the paint job. So yeah, there's gonna be a little bit of speckly here or there, but whatever, we're just gonna lean into that and maybe we can make it look like texture on her dress later. I don't know about you, but I've never painted a model in my life that was done perfectly. So when you make these kinds of mistakes, well, you learn from it and you move on. Don't just stop and feel like you need to strip a model or start all the way over from scratch. If that were the case, I'd never finish a single model. The most important part of this step is identifying which colors you're gonna to use to prime and zenithal your model with. For this, you're just focusing on what is the most prominent color in the whole model. This way, we're getting the majority of that model painted just in this priming step. In this case, for this model, it's her skin. 
Because you've made such a big impact over a major color on the model from the get-go, you now have the flexibility to determine how little or how much extra time you want to spend on this main section. For me, I'm going to glaze in some nice maroon into the shadows and bring some more depth and color variation across the skin before I come back in and layer on some nice bright off-white tones into the skin to really bring it to life and punch those highlights. The point here is we're taking some of that time that we saved by doing the colored xenophil. We're really punching up these highlights. So our suck cut does in fact cut and not just suck. An often underappreciated aspect of miniature painting is building momentum. And that's the exact purpose of this colored prime over our main color to begin with. We're knocking out the most important, most eye-catching part of the model first, and we're getting it all the way done. We built a ton of momentum. And now from here, we're just gonna knock out a couple of things really quick with some easy ways that's kind of fun and relaxing to do at the painting table. Now that that momentum is on our side, we're gonna knock out the rest of this model using two very simple yet skill building techniques that'll not only keep this pretty low stress for you through the rest of the paint job, but it'll also improve you as a painter over time. First one is a no brainer. Any part of the model that's got a ton of texture, a ton of little details, I'm just popping out the contrast paint. Surfaces like hair, fur, anything with a lot of tiny little details, the contrast paint is gonna do what we need it to do. Really just get in those cracks and crevices and keep a little highlight for us afterwards. Because our contrast paint is going over the colored xenophil that's underneath, you're actually still gonna see a little bit of this color, sometimes faint, sometimes very heavy, depending on how transparent the color of contrast paint is. This is good. For little to no work, what we've done is we've kept all the parts of the model feeling like they have a little bit of cohesion in that color. And even when I'm just slapping on some contrast paint quickly over the areas with a lot of detail, I still like to go back through and do a nice little edge highlight over those areas as well. It really brings a lot of definition and makes it look like you've spent a lot more time on this step than you actually did. And it's always good to get more practice in with your edge highlighting. The second tool in our tool belt that we're gonna use to paint everything else in the suck cut method is just regular old acrylic paint in just a couple of quick layers. Now I realize that just painting models in a couple of thin coats of paint isn't revolutionary at all. And this painting style with a silly name is just nothing new, is it John? Of course, none of these techniques we've bundled together are new or revolutionary and even putting an awesome name like suck cut to them doesn't really change that. That's not the point though. The point of this painting process and the point of this video has nothing to do with revolutionary. It's about experimentation. It's about trying to hone and improve and excite yourself in adapting how you paint. And even a fancy, stupid name that you attach to it doesn't change that. It's all about what works for you, what's fun for you, what makes you want to get back to the painting desk. And combining a little bit of this and a little bit of that and just making it work so you get back there, improvements happen naturally. And you'll be able to get all your stuff done that much quicker. But if a silly name like Suck Cut makes you do it, then let's do it. Today's video is brought to us by the creator of the miniature I'm painting today, White Werewolf Tavern. And what I like most about White Werewolf Tavern is that no matter what you're looking for from a 3D printing Patreon, they seem to have you covered. You want a good amount of fantasy models each month? Well, they release a minimum of 15 each month. You want them to be 32 millimeter and useful in your D&D game? Well, they come with D&D 5E stat blocks. You want to practice on beautiful larger scale models as well? Well, they give you 72 millimeter models each month too, and a bust. December's release is called The Lifeless Eye, and it's a wonderfully well-rounded undead release that includes 25 unique models. And as a bonus, you not only get their awesome welcome chest, but an additional bust chest that's also free. And if you join their Patreon this month, they'll also give you a free Banshee STL, just like the one I painted in the top right corner of your screen, so you can paint along with that video. So check the link to their Patreon down below and see how 10 bucks can get you both quantity and quality in your 3D printing. Oh, I've also included a link to their My Mini Factory page. And if you use the code that's showing on your screen right now, you get 50% off everything in the store. A big thank you to White Werewolf Tavern for supporting the channel. Now let's get back to that video. 
a quick base coat and a couple of thin layers of highlights over everything else on the model is really all we need to do here. If you're feeling particularly spicy, you could actually keep the shadows in this initial dark purple. Again, that would bring all of our colors together, but don't stress about that too much. Really, it's just about getting the rest of the model painted and you'll get more crisp and quicker in this process the more models you do. Two quick suck cut tips coming at you right now. First, I want you to do all the contrast stuff before you do all the layering stuff. Why? Because with the layering, we can be a little bit messy and we can kind of not worry about having to be so precise. And if we get some of this color over an area we wanted to paint and contrast later, well, suddenly the nice zenithal and, and natural highlights we've created with our zenithal is kind of all ruined. Hot suck cut tip number two. Try to put dark colors next to bright colors. This way, when you're trying to decide what colors to paint what, if you have a light color there, put a dark color next to it. When we have our models at the table, they pop out at us so much more. All right, let's get to suck cutting some metals. First things first, we're not actually gonna start with metallic paint at all. If I'm gonna paint something a gold or a copper, I like to start with a nice dark reddish brown underneath first. If I was going to do a silver, I like to do a nice, really dark, desaturated blue first. From there, I can just do a really quick overbrush with my metallic paint, and I'd make sure to keep some of that dark undertone showing, especially in areas that would be in the shadows. By starting with our shadow color, then putting the metallics over the top, we create a ton of depth and contrast in almost no time at all. I then like to go back through with an even brighter metallic color and do some edge highlighting on just those areas that would catch the most light. I find that this really makes it feel like there's a shine happening and it's not too kind of dull and flat. So we knocked out the main color of the model and put the most focus there with our colored zenithal. Then we just do a little bit of contrast, a little bit of layering and special suck cut metallics recipe and that's just how you paint a model. And while this system isn't actually doing anything innovative at all, I think it's a lot more of a painter friendly approach to trying to get something done quickly. We're spending the most of our time on the part of the model that matters the most, and we're just knocking out the rest of the things quickly. And we're actually using some techniques that will really grow with us as we improve as painters. And you can adapt, you can change, you can grow a system like this or any other system to meet your needs. For instance, you've got the zenithal down here. Why don't you just use it as our light source to figure out where to put highlights and shadows on your very first coat of paint, like I'm doing here on the base. I'm just using that light guidance that I've shown myself and I'm directly and making those changes as I go. So I don't have to worry about where do I put the highlights? How big do I put them? And I don't have to build up seven layers of paint to get there. What's fun about this and basically any of the steps here is that they don't really require a ton of heavy thinking. Like sometimes I just want to sit down and relax and paint some models and not stress out about it. I just want to listen to a podcast or I want to watch a video. I want to do something while I'm painting. Maybe I'm hanging out with friends. In this kind of system, I can get stuff done fast. I can be proud of it, but it doesn't have to stress me out and really take all my focus. The last thing I'm going to do is actually finish up the base by putting on a texture paste. I found a bunch of different companies make colored texture paints right now to have for our basing. So we don't even need to prime or paint them. Find one that's going to fit your color scheme for your army and put it on after you've painted everything else. Then you can still go back through and you can add some shadows and depth with some shades or washes, whatever you want to do. A little quick dry brush highlight at the end. You've saved a ton of time and you've kept a consistent base through all your models. And let's definitely not overlook how 15 seconds of gluing on tufts could make it look like you spent so much more time on your models as well. And it really does add some nice texture and bring the base to life. And last but not least, make sure you get that nice clean black base rim. Remember, friends don't let friends base rim their models in colors other than black. And there you have it. You now know all the secrets that it takes to become a suck cut master. Yes, this was all kind of silly, wasn't it? Well, the internet drama about Slap Chop is equally silly. We should all be inclusive in our hobby. If someone is trying something new or they are trying to share something or teach something to other people, you should just be like, cool, either you like it or you don't. But it's all about learning, experimenting, sitting at the painting desk and just having fun. That's what this is all about. 
It's a fun hobby. And if the suck cut makes you happy, then let's get to sucking. <laughs> you can't say that. And with that, all of my nuggets of wisdom have been spent for this day. But I'd like to thank all my amazing patrons that make weird videos like this possible. If you want to support the channel, you're not sure how, check out the link to my Patreon below and you'll see some cool rewards you get for hanging out with us over on Discord and helping me make this channel a great place to be. Oh, also, before I forget, a big thank you to all of you that ordered the limited edition Slay the Grey Dice Tray. That's a lot of A's. It really does mean a lot that you picked one up. I really appreciate it. Now, I do have some left. There's not a ton. So if you were thinking about getting one, I'd say order it now before they're gone. And I'm going to see you back here again real soon. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find some time in your day to slay or suck the gray. It certainly does suck.